Okay, well, our journey with intimacy with Jesus begins about three years ago, and it begins with me, where God really met me powerfully, uh, an encounter with him. Um, I was, the church was growing, things were going well. Um, I was doing a bit more stuff in other churches and, and some leadership there. Things were going well on the outside, but on the inside, I was actually falling apart and dying. I was a victim of, of I was caught people pleasing. I was, I had insecurities galore, and I just was stumbling through life in my inner life. Uh, it came to a head one week. My wife was gone. She took the kids away, and I was on my own and supposed to get a lot of work done. Uh, but it just wasn't happening because my soul was incredibly noisy and I knew things were were breaking down and I had an appointment with somebody who had yet another complaint about the church and something inside me broke and so I quit work for the day and I went home and I, to an empty house and I just fell on my knees and, and before the Lord and just prayed a dangerous prayer which is, Lord, what is wrong with me? And I felt the Lord speak to me, do you want to know what's wrong with you? And I said, yes, I do. And he gave me a picture of a coat hook or a, a, a stand with many hooks that you'd hang coats on. Uh, and I believe he said to me, this is your soul. And people keep coming along and hanging coats on you. They're hanging burdens on you and you're trying to please them and you're not trying to please me. And you're not in the place of intimacy with me. And I felt the Lord ask me, do you want to be free? Do you want to be free? And I said, Lord, I, I want to be free. And the picture changed from all these hooks on this big coat rack and all the hooks just fell off. And inside, I felt something physically break in me. And a new freedom came rushing in and a new capacity to seek Jesus in the place of intimacy and not people pleasing. Uh, and the Lord spoke to me, if, if this doesn't change in your life, you are not going to make it. This is not going to end well and you're not going to make it. So choose what you want to do. And uh, I've been journeying with him ever since. And so for me, uh, intimacy with Jesus is the core. I believe uh, we're called to make disciples. And if we're not teaching people how to be in intimate connection with Jesus, we're not teaching them how to be disciples. And so that's become a major focal point of our church. But it, it begins with me and the other leaders. And I can't do what I do without intimacy with Jesus. Um, and for me, the only way to do that is spiritual disciplines. Uh, and there's a lot of them that, that people know and love. And for me, the two biggest are solitude and silence. And uh, that is just an incredible uh, fertile garden for me. Uh, and over the last two or three years, uh, as I've pursued those disciplines of an intimacy with Jesus, um, it has changed me dramatically in terms of my inner life and my capacities and and that is and of course it's affected my leadership as well and the things that I um, fears that I had attempts to please people you know it's just dramatically shaped it's provided um, a real focal point for us as a church so uh, I like to say over the last three years I've preached hundreds of sermons on different passages and they've all had one theme intimacy with Jesus. I believe and have seen in my own church intimacy with Jesus fuels mission and fuels the miraculous. Because out of the place of intimacy that we then go and do in the name of the Lord and have the confidence and power behind us to do that. We don't do it because we signed up to a doctrine or we have a name like Vineyard. Um, we do it because we know and have been in the presence of Jesus. A number of years ago uh, my father passed away and uh, it was one of those phone calls in the middle of the night, total surprise, and you're just undone with grief. And a couple of weeks passed, and the funeral had happened, and we were back in Ireland, and uh, I just was not doing well at all. And um, it was one of those days, uh, up in the morning, supposed to have a day off, and things not going well. And my wife just took one look at me and left with our children and said, I'll be back. And that's when I knew it was really bad, uh, that I wasn't doing well. And I just... Did the only thing I knew how to do was I went to be with Jesus. And uh, I just began to cry out to him, who will father me now? Who will be there for me? And he said to me, I will father you. I will father you. And then I spent the next kind of hour with Jesus. That's the only way I can describe it. And I did other things in the house, but it was with him in, in a deep and intimate way. And, and something he spoke to me uh, is something that I think is, is vital and for our entire movement and, and that is all that we have to give away is our relationship with him 
we can know a lot of stuff about growing and planting churches and that's great and we can know a lot of stuff about ministering to people and that's wonderful but the only thing we really have is our relationship with Jesus and that's all we have to give away to people but the good news is is he's the most compelling person has ever walked the face of this earth he is the most compelling idea and reality that we have today yeah on the planet and if we are passionately in love with him and close to him and in a deep rich intimate relationship with him people are going to want to gather around that now it may be tens it may be hundreds it may be thousands of people but people are going to want to gather around him and what he's doing in us and so for me that's what i try and do as i try and lead our church i try and be as close to jesus as i possibly can and invite everybody else that wants to come with me to do that and that's how I do it, and that's how I lead. That's how I look uh, for leaders, is I watch who can have that with Jesus, or at least in an embryonic stage, have that hunger and that desire to be with Jesus in that way, and then let intimacy not stagnate and turn into navel-gazing, but turn into mission. Because when we're with Jesus, we can't help ourselves but to go and do the things that he does. We pray for the sick, we plant churches, we... We, we could serve the poor, we, we do all the stuff in his name, and we actually change communities and even nations. And so it influences incredibly how I lead, 